Do you think that the doctor that prescribes you the pills knows that you're addicted? Yes, for sure. And why does he still prescribe you pills? Because he wants money. That's it. She says 20 on Friday, no problem. She's telling them she had three today so she can function. I'm going to start feeling sick soon if I don't have my medication. When a lot of us think of prescription drug abuse, we think Anna Nicole Smith, Heath Ledger, Michael Jackson. But the story of the celebrity overdose overshadows a much larger issue. In the United States, more people are now abusing prescription medication than heroin, cocaine, and ecstasy combined. The drug of choice for a growing number of users is oxycodone, a synthetic opioid best known by the brand name Oxycontin. It's basically heroin, made in a lab. Given the choice between heroin and Oxycontin, hands down, they're taking the Oxycontin. Oxycontin is the same as heroin, except it's made by a pharmaceutical company, so you know what you're getting. Oxy was developed to treat people in severe chronic pain, like terminally ill cancer patients. But it's now become a part of a booming illicit trade in prescription pills. The heart of which is right here in South Florida. Everybody tells you, you come to Broward County to get your pills. But the source of these pills isn't some guy on the corner or a Colombian drug lord. It's a growing cottage industry of storefront pain clinics, doctor's offices, that liberally dispense the drug. They're not doctors, they are drug dealers with degrees. Doctors in Florida prescribe oxycodone at five times the national average. The effect of this flood of pills is alarming and is being felt well beyond the Sunshine State's borders. One after the other, just oxycodone, oxycodone, oxycodone. My wife passed away right there. They're shooting them, they're snorting them, they're selling them, and they're dying. This is my son, Drew, and he was 25. Maureen Barrett's son, Drew, died of an overdose from prescription pills. This is what he was able to get in less than 57 days. These are uh, candies, but I've gone all over the state with these just to show what the pill clinics can do. The candies represent the nearly 1,500 pills that Drew was prescribed in less than two months by a single doctor at a pain clinic in Florida. He ended up getting 300 Xanax, and these are your highest dosage, and methadone, 80 milligrams, Somas, and Dilaudid. Dilaudid is what they give you before you have surgery. You know, pretty powerful stuff, and the mixture is just deadly. I had had major surgery, and um, I came out with um, 30 Vicodin. This is what I came out with, and I had major, major surgery. And my son could go in with no illness and come out with that. It was incredible. I mean, just the sheer quantity. Drew's supplier was a doctor in Miami who was implicated in several other overdose deaths. He was basically operating as a legalized drug dealer. There was no x-rays, no MRIs, no physical therapy, just writing prescriptions for money. As the popularity of prescription drugs has surged, the number of deaths caused by pills has also risen dramatically. In Florida, pills are involved in 75% of all the drug-related deaths. And on average, 11 people a day die from prescription overdoses. I think if 11 people a day are dying, I'd call that an epidemic. If manatees were washing up on our shores every day, the world would be outraged and researchers and scientists from around the country would be coming to solve the problem. And we are not putting that much focus on, on people, and that's just a shame. He, um we were supposed to start actually a rehab program on the following Tuesday, but on Saturday a friend took him to this doctor's office. He got another 455 pills and took the pills and he was dead on Sunday. We found him on Monday. And you just never get over it. It's with you 24-7. You're not supposed to bury your children. Who found him and how did you find him? His father and Todd went over and they found him. Todd is Maureen's son and Drew's younger brother. I think it make me would want to stop, but it just it literally made me want to get even more high so I didn't have to deal with the pain of losing a brother. Todd is also addicted to oxycodone. You're 
worst time, how, many, how much were you taking? I was doing 30, 30 milligram oxycodone pills a day and 10 Xanax bars. How did you get that, that many drugs? I would drugs? go to doctor, I would doctor shop. I was going to five different doctors. And then I would sell just enough medication to get to the next doctor's appointment. So at the end of the month, after going to five doctors, how many pills did you get in one month? Oh, over a couple thousand. Yeah, because my wife was going as well. Todd introduced his wife, Stephanie, to pills, and she eventually became addicted to Oxy, too. This picture, I, had a real, I was really bad then. That was when I was doing 30 pills a day. My wife was high in this picture. I was high, too. What about in your wedding day? Wasted. Both of you or just you? Mm, she did some, too. My wife passed away right there on November 22nd. 12.59 is when I woke up. And she was laying like this, just like this. And I pulled her hair back, and her head was completely blue. And I called 911, and it was just too late. What happened? Uh, well, before we, we took a nap, and before we went to bed, we both did two pills, and she just never woke up. So she died six months ago? Right. That was her side, and, you know, after she died, I always slept here, but then I just said, you know, I miss her, I want to be where she was, so I sleep on that side now. I did drugs when the ambulance was on the way. I snorted some pills, some oxycodone. And it sounds really selfish and stupid, and it is really selfish and stupid. But that's like the first thing, whenever something bad happens, I just, whatever I can get my hands on, I used to numb the pain. Angie? Angie, who's that? Mommy. Mommy. Who's that? Todd and Stephanie had a daughter together. Who's that? Sarah. Sarah, who's that? They named her Drew after Todd's brother. Oh, what does the pig say? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> what does the pig say again? Oh, that's it. Years of addiction have left Todd unemployed and unable to support himself, let alone his daughter. So Todd's parents have custody of Drew. Maureen is helping to support Todd. This one seems to be doing pretty good, Todd. She takes care of his apartment, gives him five dollars a day allowance, and is trying to help him get back on his feet. That was uh, one of the plants I was given at Drew's funeral. I still have it alive. <sighs> Hopefully, they know we're looking at him, right? Yeah. And hopefully they're looking down on us. They are. And little Drew. <laughs> She's not aware that Todd is using Oxy again. We're going to show you guys how to get some oxycodone in the state of Florida. pages with uh, ads one after the other for pain clinics most of which have actual coupons you know $35 off initial visit buy one get one free prescription drugs this one has actually says complete pain care opiate medications you know you have a real business when the last 10 pages of the local newspaper are dedicated to selling painkillers the number of pain management clinics in South Florida almost tripled in 2008. There are now as many as 100 clinics in Broward County alone. The proliferation of pain clinics, particularly in Broward County, is, is shameful. Of the top 50 dispensing physicians of oxycodone in the entire country, all 50 are in Florida. And 33 of them are in Broward County. There are areas of Broward County that literally you can't go three, four blocks without seeing pain management clinic, pain management clinic, pain management clinic. Why Florida? The biggest reason is because we don't have a prescription drug monitoring plan. We don't have a database that tracks these drugs. Florida is the largest state in the country without a prescription drug monitoring plan. Without a database to track who's getting what pills and how much, Addicts can go to multiple doctors and get multiple prescriptions in a practice known as doctor shopping. The growing number of pain clinics in Florida has made it a doctor shopper's paradise. If you're an addict like Todd, it can start to feel like there's temptation on practically every corner. 
We're gonna show you guys how to get some oxycodone in the state of Florida. This is what I do for a living. I'd go to five doctors in a month. My wife would go to four. My wife died from this. And I still unfortunately dibble and dabble in Hi, my name is Todd. I have an MRI and a pharmacy burnout. Would it be feasible for me to get in today? Hi, is this all in pain management? Hi, my name is Todd. Do you think it's possible I could be seen today? Despite the fast-growing number of clinics in Florida, the demand for painkillers is so high here that it can be difficult to get an appointment on short notice. And people often have to wait for hours before they get in to see a doctor. A good one will have patients filled like the whole week. They're not going to say, OK, come in today, because that means nobody's going to that place, unless nobody knows about that clinic. It's a way of life down here, just these doctors, for a lot of people. I look for a dispensing on site. That means they're more crooked than, let me call this one. Now. Many states don't allow doctor's offices to both prescribe and dispense medication, except in small amounts because it creates a financial incentive to push pills. But in Florida, on-site pharmacies are legal and often preferred by addicts. If you read my MRI, it says, mild bulging is what is labeled the L5 disc. It says unremarkable right here. So they just want a piece of paper that has a little something on it so they feel comfortable with giving you the medication. Hi, my name is Todd. I was wondering, uh, can they, are you accepting walk-ins today? Before one o'clock. Okay, thank you. And what's your name? Joanna. Thanks, Sean. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. All right, let's do this. Now, this is, you have to understand. Anything could go. Okay, they could see track marks on my arms and say, "Get the fuck out of here." They could call my doctors and find out I'm doctor shopping. They could write me a very small amount of pills. They could possibly, possibly not write me anything. Now, usually that doesn't happen. I'm just saying that this is a, that is a possibility. So, we were filming a pain clinic from across the street, and this huge black SUV comes up with a guy all tattooed, a huge guy, but now he's actually following us. He's right behind us. I just gave him the wrong pharmacy printout. Todd returns from the pain clinic empty-handed. He'd been denied over a problem with his paperwork. Unable to get an appointment anywhere else, he moves to plan B. Don't watch, hold the cameras down. Todd was saying that he was jonesing real bad and he just went into a, a friend's house. He says that she sells oxys. He's actually just coming out now. Yeah, I think he got some. Oh, uh, yeah. I got 30, 30 milligram oxycodone. Uh, this, this person that you went to buy the drugs mm, from, she usually has them available? Not really, no. Why? Because I can't go there if her grandson's there, and 90% of the time he's there. So it's an old woman? Yeah, it's an old. She's about 70 years old. 70 years old? Yes. And she's selling, she's dealing yeah. oxys? Yes. You have to hold it in for a long, long time. How do you feel now? I feel normal. <laughs> I don't feel high, I just feel normal. I feel like I did if, if I didn't use drugs. See, like when you do drugs, you, you go up and you go down. And for a, after a while, you start doing it, you start to go below the normal level. So when you when you get high, you're just getting normal again. You're not getting high anymore. You see what I'm saying? It's like like a mountain. It's, it's like That's when you're addicted already. Yeah, that's when you know you're, you're, you're
I've been to detox about 15 times and I've been to rehab about six. I get out, I stay clean for a little while. I just tell myself I can do it once and this Friday night turns into Tuesday and Tuesday turns into Thursday and before you know it, I'm doing them every day again. How common is prescription drug abuse here in Florida? It's really big, really big in Florida. Um, it's bad. It's, I know today wasn't easy, but if you put in a couple of days, I can, you, know, you can definitely get medication. And they, they just hand it out like it's nothing. You know, I go to the emergency room because I, I broke my rib when I was drinking. And I told them when I was on, and they are like, I wouldn't give that to you if your arm is amputated. But people want them. It's supply and demand. People want them. There's going to be a doctor writing for them. In Florida, some pain clinics are known to dispense medication more easily than others. So... We came here to check out this pain clinic because a lot of the law enforcement and uh, doctors told us that a lot of the prescriptions are actually coming from this one pain clinic. And um, they've actually just closed this office and there's a guy out front sitting in a car giving, handing out uh, the maps for the new location. And they have a new office that has just opened a few miles up the road. So we're going to check it out. Wow, look at that. The parking lot is completely full and there's even a security guard out front. We stopped the car to film the clinic, but only got off with this one quick shot before we were chased away by two big men. So we were filming a pain clinic from across the street, and literally we had the camera out for five minutes, and this uh, huge black SUV comes up with a guy all tattooed, a huge guy, and starts asking us, uh, what the f are you doing? Um, what are you filming? And uh, we drove off, and now he's actually following us. He's right behind us. The men continued to follow us for several miles, and they were eventually joined by another car. So we decided to call the police. They approached us. We were on the other side of the street, and now they're actually following us. So we were followed by those guys for about 25 minutes. And every time we try to pull into a gas station, they'd come out of the car. So we call the police, and um, this is the scene. All because we wanted to film a pain clinic. The quote-unquote clinics that are really engaged in the worst type of medical practice, and some of them are engaged in flagrant criminal activity. We see cars lined up, security guards, making sure people aren't loitering and hanging around the clinic and causing trouble. I mean, this is medicine? I mean, this, is, this is ridiculous. The police let the men go with a warning. We later found out that one of the cars was registered to the pain clinic we were trying to film, and the other to the owner, a man who, according to a Miami Herald investigation, has already spent time in prison for possessing steroids with intent to sell. Many of these clinics, in Broward County in particular, are fronts. They are clinics that have been established by non-physician owners, and they bring a physician, say, out of retirement, who has a DEA number, to work there to write as many prescriptions as possible for cash. This footage was taken inside one clinic on a cell phone camera. There are three lines here, one for new patients, one for returning patients, and one to pick up prescriptions. The growing crowds, along with the large number and combination of pills being prescribed, have led many to believe that some clinics have been set up just to cater to pill addicts. It's just legal drug pushing. It's unbelievable. You're watching people go in there that are drug addicts. They're drug addicts. A person is getting 180, 240 Oxycontin, Roxy's, Percocet, Xanax, I mean, who possibly is in that much pain? We wanted to get a look inside a pain clinic for ourselves. This time, we decided to take a smaller camera. So this is a little undercover camera pen. There's a camera in here, and we're going to go into 
one of these pain clinics and just see what we can film. And this is where we're gonna put the little camera. How does it look? Good. There are about a dozen people inside the clinic, mostly young. Like most pain management clinics in Broward, they don't accept insurance. It's cash only. And they only offer one course of treatment, drugs. So pain management basically what we do here, so we don't provide therapy. Okay. Pain management works is we need your MRI, the doctor's going to assess you. Okay. And basically see where your limitations are, how you feel, and where you feel that you have pain, or we need to give you medication. Okay. What, what, what kind of medication would it be? Uh, Percocets, oxycodone, oxydose. Okay. Got it. 200 first visit, 140 the follow-ups. And the MRI is how much? 290. Yeah. Only cash. Yeah. It's a racket. <laughs> you have to pay cash to be seen. You have to pay cash for your prescriptions. You have to pay cash for them to make an MRI for you. Once you know what the, the game is, um, it's on. Word of Florida Spain clinics is spread well beyond the state's borders. People from faraway places now make regular pilgrimages to the Sunshine State just to get their pills. Do you happen to have a cigarette by any chance? Yeah. Where are you from? Kentucky. Kentucky? What are you doing all the way down here? But they won't give you nothing like this. I was going to ask you, how does it, do, do they give you anything here? What's... Uh, yeah, they give you something. They give you here? Yeah. They don't in Kentucky? No. Uh -huh. No, I ain't more in How are you doing? Tired. Been asleep for two, three days. Why not? Driving on the road. Where from? Northern Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, long way. Why do you come all the way here? Down here is a real liberal with dispensing narcotics. Yeah. Up home, you just can't. <laughs> they don't, ain't none of that. So it's easier to get it here. Yeah. They just give you what you want. They'll, just, they'll hand you 240-30s and 120-15s and 90 Xanax parts. Count that money out to them. Here you go. See you. See you next month. They don't care, you know. Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, surrounding states, residents are coming into Florida because prescription medication is so readily and easily available. We've become a distribution center for oxycodone for the rest of the country unfortunately. I need you to tell me where your OCs are. I, I don't want to have to tear your house up, so you need to tell me where they are. Are you going to look? And I'm not happy about it. Florida has become the painkiller capital of the U.S. Of all the oxycodone dispensed by doctors in the whole country, 85% of it comes from Florida. With the abundance of pills, the state is seeing a new type of tourism, people who travel from all over the U.S. just to visit a doctor. Down here, they're real liberal with dispensing narcotics. And they're returning home with hundreds, if not thousands, of potent pills. But unlike trafficking in illicit drugs, transporting pills can be as easy as buying a plane ticket on what's known as the Oxycontin Express. So we're taking a low-cost flight from Fort Lauderdale to Huntington, West Virginia. This flight has been called the Oxy Express because it's the flight that people from uh, the tri-state area, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia take to come here down to Florida to buy prescription drugs and take them back to their home state. To get a sense of how far Florida's pill pipeline stretches, we're heading to the heart of Appalachia, to Greenup, Kentucky, population 1,200. This is Greenup County SO1, Sheriff Keith Cooper, and I'm making a phone call to a female known only to me as Brandy at this time. Keith Cooper is the sheriff of Greenup County. He's trying to make contact with a local woman who he's learned is looking to make a trip down to Florida to buy some pills. He sometimes goes by Duncan when he's working undercover. Brandy. 
Hey, this is Duncan. I'm a friend of Jimmy's. He said something about you uh, needed somebody a ride to Florida. I'm fixing to head on up out of here a little bit later, baby. It's about 20 after 2 now, baby. I need you to get back with me pretty soon. In Greenup, the biggest worries used to be moonshine and marijuana. But these days, it's all pills. These are all Florida. Those are 80s there, 80 bucks a piece. So all of these here are from... Uh... From Florida, yeah. yeah. These are Fort Lauderdale? Yep. About four years ago, from uh, my guys and me arresting people and starting noticing, hell, that's from Florida. And then just more often, it started happening more and more and more. And finally, it got to the point, hell, they're all from Florida. That's when I started making the phone calls to the DEA, pharmacy boards, medical boards. Yeah, I got you. And basically, what they told me was, in a nice way, is, look, you're a hick sheriff from the hills of Kentucky. Don't be trying to tell us how to do our job. Throughout the state of Kentucky, there's no family that has not been impacted one way or another by this. If we see somebody in the obituary columns of the newspaper and they're in their 30s or 40s, most likely it's because of a drug overdose. Wow. But we don't know. And why is that? It, because it's so pervasive that we don't have enough money to test everyone that comes in. Kentucky now leads the nation in prescription drug abuse. Oxycodone first got a foothold here about a decade ago. And the rampant abuse of the drug in Appalachia even earned Oxy the nickname Hillbilly Heroin. But as state officials began to crack down on local doctors, they noticed that a growing number of pills were coming from a thousand miles away. We see patients coming in overdosed all the time, addicted to pain pills, and most of them are from Florida. If, if I'm here in a little ER in Eastern Kentucky, I can name 15 doctors in Florida that I've never even met. People that want to make money down in Florida realized that they can make money because there was no nar narcotic tracking system. It was basically, come here, give us cash, we give you a prescription. Well, Pablo Escobar couldn't have had it any better. Aside from the high demand for Oxy in the region, there's also a lot of money to be made in selling pills that are bought in Florida. In Appalachia, a single 30 milligram pill of oxycodone sells for $30. That's three times the street price in Florida and 10 times the price paid at a pain clinic. In other words, a bottle of pills that you paid $500 for at a clinic in Broward County, you can sell for $5,000 in Greenup County. It's created entrepreneurs out here that literally send dozens a month, dozens a month down there. They send dozens of people out yes. there to just to buy pills? Just to go to Florida and buy pills and do a turnaround and come right back. If I front you the money and you go for me, I give you half of the pills, and you give me the other half of the pills. So I'll be able to feed my addiction without having to pay anything up Exactly. Front. You get your addiction fed, I make money, everybody's happy. Everybody except the old worn out sheriff of the county. He's not happy. With Florida several hundred miles outside his jurisdiction, Sheriff Cooper focuses on the only part of the pill trade that he can. One to ten. Today, the sheriff is going to serve a warrant on a man he's learned is selling oxys he bought in Florida. Come on, man, be there. Be there, be there, be there, be there. There he is. Here. Got him. Yep, that's him. Let's find out what's up. What kind of medication is it? Just let make you aware right now, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. We have a search warrant for your residence, and we're going to search it. The man that the sheriff is arresting is named Terry. He's 53 years old, unemployed, and addicted to oxycodone. I need you to tell me where your OCs are. I, I don't want to have to tear your house up, so you need to tell me where they are. He lives with his wife and daughter. His daughter is also addicted to oxy. I've shot him, I've snorted him. Do you have... Oh, you can look. And I'm not happy about it. What are they? These are the... Track marks. From shooting oxy? Mm -hmm. Have you tried quitting? Yeah, it's just not that easy. 
Well, Especially you, when it's in your face all the time. And where you go in Kentucky, somebody's doing peels. Okay, we got, uh... What is that? I'd say this is oxycodone and Xanax, if I were guessing. And so you can see they're all from Florida. For selling the pills he got in Florida, Terry is facing a two-year sentence. Do the crime, you gotta do the time. <laughs> It'll make me feel good, kinda ashamed. Uh, I have to do stuff like this. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to survive, feed your family, keep the bills paid. In Greenup, the prison is filled with people like Terry. So what are the, most of the women in here from? Oxycontin, Xanax. That's mainly your, your big mm -hmm. things, really. Can I see hi to them? Hi. Hi. How many of us are in here? Yeah. 14. 14. 14 of us. And you guys are in here, why? Um, for prescriptions and for selling them. That's what I'm here Prescription for. Prescription pills? Yeah. And all of you trafficking and yeah. prescriptions. The majority of the women possession. here possession. Mm -hmm. Possession, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They call us pill billies. No, they're down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did you guys start taking pills? I'm not sure. Just it's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. It's easy to get a hold of because that's what a lot of people are doing. So most of the people you run around with are either already doing it or they're gonna introduce you to it. So it's easy to get addicted, and once you get a hold of the money too, that's yeah. just mm -hmm. as addictive it's, as doing it's, the yeah, it's just the money addictive. is the addictive. Yeah. <laughs> the Greenup County Jail normally holds around 80 prisoners, but these days it's almost double that. What percentage of people are in there because of pills? One way or another, 90. Plus well, something regarding pills, whether it's burglary to get pills, theft to get pills, spousal abuse because they're on pills, DUI because of pills. Just about all of them, in one way or another, have to do with the pills. Just about all of them. How many of you have been to Florida to buy your pills? I have. All of us, yeah. All of us. You all have? Because yeah. When I went, there were four people in one car, four people in the other car. Mm -hmm. And the seven of them went, and they hit three doctors. Yeah. And they're all getting 180, 190 pills. See, that was the best thing about my ex-boyfriend was that... <laughs> That sounds bad, but he had one leg, and he'd get max. <laughs> so he was getting an absolute max. What's the most difficult part about being here now? Being away from my kids. I mean, could you knowingly just go leave your children for seven years? I still haven't seen my three-year-old. Because I just can't imagine mm. being through that glass and her not being able to touch me. It's hard. Don't. <laughs> Don't even start. Because <laughs> I know it's, it, what was it, a week ago, Kylie came and saw me? And even one of the guards, Charles out there, he said it was hard for me not to cry because Kylie had to hold that phone and she was pounding that glass. She was screaming, Mommy, Mommy. Donna has been sentenced to seven years for trafficking pills. Her two daughters are living with her mother. Literally every family in this county has been affected in one way or another. I'm just so angry at myself and at her for getting to this point where she has to spend seven years in jail and away from her children. And every day they ask about her and want to see her. And a two-year-old that can't, I mean, she, one day she is good, the next day she is, you know, I want my mom, I want her now, and she'll scream and cry for her. Are you frustrated because so much of the, the problem is actually coming from Florida? I'm, I'm incensed. I'm beyond frustrated. I'm incensed because all of the profit is down there. All of the pain is up here. Don't move. 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 Don't move.
I didn't hear from Todd last night, and I didn't hear from him this morning. And that's not a good sign. been in close contact with Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio. With the law enforcement officials from those states, we are hearing that nine times out of ten people are being arrested or when they are found with an overdose, they have prescription pill bottles from, from Florida and most specifically from Broward County. As a Broward Countyan, um, it's embarrassing that we have let the situation get this far. In Florida, the challenge of stemming the flow of pills has mostly fallen to local law enforcement. Over the last few months, the Special Investigations Unit of the Broward County Sheriff's Office has made the prescription drug trade a primary focus. If the main ingredient in each pill is oxycodone, then you can weigh them all together. You know, we're used to doing jump outs on crack dealers and you know guys standing on the corner, but now it's you're getting all the legal prescriptions per se, you know. Detective Bran Reddell is getting prepared to go undercover on the unit's latest sting operation. I get props. Sometimes we have to drive a little crazy. Just hang on. We'll be all right. The pharmacy we're going to right now doesn't have a computerized system, so they don't keep computerized records of who they dispense to and all that. A lot of the guys that doctor shop and get all these legal pills, go there to fill their prescriptions because there's no record keeping of what they're doing. And then the cover's over there and he's possibly making, making contact with somebody right now. The unit is targeting what is known as diversion, people selling pills out of their own prescriptions. He's just waiting to spark up a conversation with somebody that looks like they're coming to do business here. Or he'll start a regular conversation with them, then he'll start talking about his ailments, and then he'll wait for them to offer to sell him the pills. We're there only a matter of minutes before the undercover detective is approached. Oh, this is a deal, but she doesn't have the pill today. She says she'll have them on Friday. She's so going to sell them 20 for $10 each on Friday. So that'll be a $200 deal. She told them she did, um, she did three today so she can function to go to work. He's got to start a conversation with them, and they have to get to a point where they're offering the pills to him. See, the guy just started, so, the car and started talking to him. 10 for 120. 10 for 120. This guy black shirt. Okay. following him on foot. 10 for 120. This guy black shirt. Going east out of the lot, next to the building. Okay. So it's probably going to be a good deal. 10 for. If it's a good deal, I got the call from here because I can see him perfectly. He's asking for the money. Counting out the money to the guy now. Just don't talk about the money. Guy's not like he's on the move. He's, he's zooted, no doubt. The guys have problems counting the money. He's not smart enough. He's, it's because he's high. Ryan's getting another vehicle now. 10 4. Alright, here we go. Alright, we're going to stop. We're going to stop right at their side. This is where we're going? Yeah, right here. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Good. Pull up. Come. Hey, hey. Don't move. Don't move. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. What did I do? Put the person down. What did I do? There's some Xanax in there and some Oxys. It looks like we have about four to five different types. We got the Roxys. We got the Xanax. These are probably Percocets. This script was filled on the 4th, two days ago, for 150, and it only has left maybe 30. So is it usually this easy? It's usually this easy. Just sit out there, and, and, and this isn't even a pain clinic. This is just a pharmacy. The pain clinics, there, there's more and more people down there. So you spent 30 minutes in, in front of that pharmacy, and in 30 minutes you got three people willing to yep. sell you drugs. Yep, it's a good day so far. should not be happening. I don't get involved in shit like this. This is not my lifestyle. I should be going to church with my mother at 6.30 tonight. Like, this is not my lifestyle. The couple arrested are small time. 
selling pills just to support a habit. I'm going to start feeling sick soon if I don't have my medication. The penalties they face are stiff. Both of them are facing uh, three-year minimum mandatories. She had 5.1 total oxys, and he had 5.2 grams. The total weight they were carrying is just a drop in the bucket compared to the more than 9 million oxycodone pills that were prescribed by just 50 doctors in Florida in the last six months of 2008. He was just saying he could give me a crooked doctor and all his friends go to the doctor. Does this usually happen, that they try to give you information? Once they realize what the face was, then they all want to talk. They all want to talk to him and give up everybody in the water. For the sheriff's department, this is a pretty classic case. Despite the alarming number of pills being prescribed by doctors in Broward County, on paper, it's all technically legal. The reality is that it's easier to go after people who are illegally selling a few pills on the streets than after the doctors who might be prescribing them to addicts. The question then really comes down to one of ethics, and that oath that every doctor takes. It really, really bothers me that they do take that oath first, do no harm, and that's all these people are doing, is harm. I contacted several of the clinics in this piece, hoping to speak with a doctor or owner. Hello, uh, my name is Mariana Van Zeller. I'm a, a reporter from Current TV, and I'm working on a documentary about prescription. Hello? Hello? I'm doing a documentary about prescription drug abuse. I was wondering if I could speak to either the doctor or the owners of the clinic, please. No. Thank you. Bye-bye. Most pain clinics hung up on me. The one that we visited that had the people from out of state in the parking lot had this to say. We're no longer taking out of state patients, so thank you. You're not taking out of state patients? Since, since when? Uh, that's all I have to say. OK? Thank you. And after several attempts to speak with someone at the clinic who chased us away, I finally managed to get a person on the line. A lot of the doctors and law enforcement that we've spoken to say that a lot of addicts actually go to your clinic um, to get prescription drugs because they say it's very easy. What, do, you, do you care to comment? Not really. No. I would love to be able to do a, an on-camera interview with you. Uh, would you be available? We could come... We don't do interviews, I told you that. Already. We don't do interviews, okay. You're changing a story that doesn't exist. But with doctors in Florida prescribing oxy at five times the national average, people driving into the state from all over the U.S. to get their pills, and an average of 11 Floridians dying every day from prescription overdoses, the reality here in Florida was becoming difficult to ignore. In July, facing mounting pressure, the governor approved a law that would create a prescription drug monitoring program. State Representative Kelly Skidmore was instrumental in getting the bill passed. This prescription drug monitoring program, it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to stop all of this unscrupulous behavior, but it is going to allow the state of Florida to have some regulation over pain clinics for the first time ever. But after so many years of inaction, for many, the damage has already been done. Do you want to go night night? The thousands of people that die every year in the state of Florida is damage you can't recover from. Florida's prescription drug monitoring plan is only supposed to go into effect at the end of 2010. And in the meantime, Maureen continues to check on her son, Todd, every day. After Drew passed away in 2002, I had his graduation picture just made into a small picture so I could put it in my car. I'm in my car every day, so I just, he's just in my heart. And then when Stephanie died, I put their wedding picture up, Todd and Stephanie, and I just, um, I hope they're watching down from heaven and protecting all of us. So we're pulling up to Todd's apartment right now. Like I said, it's a mile away from my house so that I can check on him a couple times a day just to be sure that um, everything's okay. Can you imagine 27 years old having to have your mom check on you? That's the disease of addiction. Maureen found out earlier this morning that Todd was using pills again. I didn't hear from Todd last night, and I didn't hear from him this morning, and that's not a good sign. I get really anxious when he doesn't answer that phone. So I just found that these were all over his uh, nightstand here. Were you angry at him this morning when you saw that he was No, I was more scared. I, I thought for sure that I was going to find him dead this morning. 
Oh, I get like the detox lecture about going into detox. We need to make a decision by the end of today. That's what she says. I'm not gonna go. I've been there too many times. It's embarrassing going back, and I'd rather just deal with it at my house. Do you think that Todd will ever be completely clean? After 16 years of going through this, no. No. And do I think he's in the 5% that will recover? No. I think this is the way our life is going to be the rest of his life. Our big thing now is just to keep Todd alive. We are defenseless against the disease of addiction. But we'll keep trying. That's what moms do. See more Vanguard Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Current or online at current.com slash Vanguard.